video, I want to talk about one of the next hotly anticipated events on Ethereum's roadmap, the arrival of Ethereum 2.0. If you want flexibility of smart contracts, ease of use, you go to Ethereum. There's not one overarching term for their upgrade. When exactly is this going to happen? Is it going to fix the gas fees on Ethereum? Follow the developers. How can they finish that on time? We're going to talk about Ethereum. Ethereum. So let's talk about Ethereum 2.0. You got it. Almost since Ethereum's beginning back in July of 2015, there's been chat about Ethereum 2.0, a bigger, bolder, better version of the original blockchain platform. It's been years in the making, evolving, adapting, and developing. So what is this Ethereum upgrade all about? Why does Ethereum need it? What difference will it make? And will all of Ethereum automatically become 2.0? And why the hell is it taking so long? Well, lucky for you, I'm here to answer at least some of these questions. If you're going to understand what's happening with Ethereum 2.0, we need to go right back to the beginning of Ethereum. Let's get into it. So what is Ethereum? So Bitcoin is a blockchain that's designed for one application. Ethereum is a general purpose blockchain. Basically, the point of Ethereum is that anyone can build and use applications as well as digital money without the need for banks or payment providers. It's become a marketplace of financial services or DeFi, games, apps, NFTs all across the blockchain network. And over the years, the Ethereum blockchain with its cryptocurrency called Ether has grown massively, making it second only to Bitcoin in the cryptocurrency market. If you want to learn more about Ethereum, then you might want to take a look at our film where we turn it into a superhero. Follow the link below. Back to why Ethereum is focused on an upgrade. Well, there are four challenges Ethereum needs to deal with. First one we have is it's slow. Second thing, it's expensive. Number three, it uses a lot of energy. Number four, the competition, the so-called ETH killers. When it comes to Ethereum's transaction speed, it's safe to say it's definitely not in the Usain Bolt category. Ethereum averages 20 transactions per second, and for comparison, PayPal processes 193 TPS at peak holiday season. While Visa claims it can handle 65,000 per second, and rival blockchain Solana also asserts it's able to process 65,000 TPS although that is currently untested. So why does Ethereum come up so short? It's all because the platform like Bitcoin uses a proof of work protocol. Proof of work sees miners racing to solve complex puzzles to validate transactions and add new blocks to the Ethereum blockchain. It's hugely labor intensive with multiple miners competing over every transaction which is crucial for security. But this limits the number of transactions you can achieve. And that's a problem for Ethereum, because unlike Bitcoin, where demand for transactions is purely about trading the currency, Ethereum's programmable blockchain makes the number of potential transactions infinitely higher. As Ethereum has grown, increased demand for transactions has caused congestion. Congestion has the knock-on effect of increasing costs for users because everyone is competing for Ethereum miners to verify their transactions, and that pushes up the transaction costs known as gas fees. Think of an Ethereum miner as it's kind of like the kid that gets to pick a team in gym class. You're gonna pick the best players first, or in Ethereum, those that offer the highest payments. Now let's say instead of there being a pool of 10 players, you're looking at a pool of 10,000. If you're last to be picked, you're going to be waiting a long time. And that's exactly what happens when Ethereum becomes too congested. A busy network disqualifies those not willing or not able to pay higher gas fees. In recent months, the gas fees have skyrocketed, sometimes being higher than the transaction itself. And that has made a lot of people pretty mad. Then there's Ethereum's current need for power. It uses a lot of energy. It's estimated Ethereum currently uses 106 terawatt hours per year. To put that into perspective, 
all of Google uses only about 13 terawatt hours per year. The power needed for a single Ethereum transaction is equivalent to powering a house in the US for a whole day. Finally, Ethereum has a deal with the challenge of the new kids on the block, the ETH killers. Solana, Cardano, Terra are just three competitor blockchains able to handle many more transactions and offer significantly cheaper costs and all have achieved greater growth than Ethereum in 2021. They potentially threaten its long-term existence. So now you know why Ethereum decided it needed a massive upgrade. How will Ethereum 2.0 be different? In Ethereum's own words, it aims to be scalable, secure, and sustainable. And Vitalik Buterin has been out there promoting it. Can you briefly summarize your vision, mm -hmm. how Ethereum 2.0 will make Ethereum more scalable, secure, and sustainable? Uh, okay, the big two things that are happening, right? These are proof of stake and sharding. The key part of the upgrade is to move away from proof of work to proof of stake. So what does that mean? Unlike proof of work, proof of stake doesn't require miners to use computers to solve complex equations. Instead, transactions are validated by a validator who has staked a large sum of cold hard ETH. Proof of stake will make transactions easier to validate, the removal of complex puzzles to solve, and competing miners reduce costs and uses less energy than proof of work. This doesn't solve all of Ethereum's problems though. There's limitations to how much it can ease congestion. Think about Ethereum transactions as a tower. You want to get from the bottom to the top. Proof of stake makes this simpler, quicker, and less power intensive. A bit like adding a lift system. But there's still a limit to the capacity of the tower, which is where the other key part of the upgrade comes in. Sharding. Yeah, sharding. At the moment, every Ethereum transaction has to be validated by the entire blockchain. Sharding breaks up the blockchain into 64 mini separate chains. Transactions are then validated by one mini chain rather than the entire blockchain. The result, a massively greater capacity to handle transactions or scalability. This reduces congestion and keeps transaction costs low. So that's the detail of what Ethereum 2.0 is and how it is supposed to improve the platform. The big question we're all asking though, is when is this all going to happen? Ethereum have broken it down into three simple, well, maybe not so simple, but three phases. Phase one is the creation of an Ethereum 2.0 proof of stake blockchain called the beacon chain. The beacon chain exists alongside the original Ethereum proof of work blockchain. Phase one was completed when it launched in late 2020. And now fast forward to present day, this brings us to phase two, the merge. Originally intended to take place in 2021, it has been delayed until Q2 2022. This is when all the data from the original Ethereum blockchain is merged over to the beacon chain. The original Ethereum blockchain will then be made obsolete by using a difficulty bomb, which will make the chain so difficult to mine, it grinds to a halt. And then the final phase is sharding, which creates a greater scalability. This is expected sometime in 2023. And it all sounds easy, right? Well, okay, no, maybe not that easy. It's a hugely ambitious plan and phases two and three have already turned into a five point roadmap to scaling Ethereum. And just to list them off for you, we got the merge, the surge, the verge, the purge, the splurge. No, I kid you not. I won't go into detail as this is some seriously complex and technical stuff, but you get the picture, right? There are huge risks for Ethereum with this plan. Firstly, an upgrade this radical and this big has never been attempted before. 
So the chances of something going wrong are massive. And because of that, it's taking time to implement. Problem is though, is it taking too long? Users are getting ever more frustrated with high gas fees and as a result, growth in Ethereum has been flatlining. While competing platforms like Solana, Phantom, and Terra Luna, who already use proof of stake algorithms, are stealing market share as they see huge growth. Although Ethereum remains king of the programmable blockchains, it could become a market leader that didn't adapt quickly enough, like BlackBerry in the mobile phone market. The move away from proof of work to proof of stake, while more efficient, is considered less secure or tamper resistant compared to proof of work. Which leads me into my final point. Will Ethereum 2.0 in reality become more centralized? Going against the very core of Ethereum's original aim, decentralization. To become an Ethereum validator in Ethereum 2.0, you'll need 32 ETH. Currently, that's equivalent to around $100,000. And that figure, looks likely to significantly rise in the long term, limiting who can become a validator. So that's the risk of Ethereum 2.0. But doubts and concerns don't seem to have dented confidence. 10% of all of Ethereum's supply is locked into Ethereum 2.0 and will only be released after upgrade completion. Total wallet addresses and user activity continues to grow, even if it is only slightly and Ethereum remains the dominant programmable blockchain, particularly for DeFi and the NFT market. If the upgrade goes to plan, it could cement Ethereum's position. Only time will tell if it will be the crypto version of BlackBerry or Apple. And if you want more of our content, then hit the bell below and subscribe. You'll be notified as more videos are coming covering everything crypto. And if you want a dose of weekly crypto news and chat, so you need to watch the Crypto Culture Show right here on our channel. Just click that link below.